I'm Bob Powers, the general manager of BART in the San Francisco Bay Area. Since the arrival of this pandemic in the United States, the Bay Area has been at the forefront in the effort to save lives. Our region has some of the longest lasting and most restrictive shelter in place orders in the country. Ridership is still down 87%. 50,000 people are riding instead of 410,000. On Monday, new shelter-in-place orders went into effect with 33 million Californians impacted by the lockdown. At BART, we've seen a dramatic shift in who is riding and who isn't. 75% are minority riders. 51% are from a household with an income of less than $50,000. Some of the stations in our system that used to be our busiest have seen some of the steepest declines in usage. Meanwhile, Fruitvale Station in the heart of Oakland has seen a surge in ridership to become our fifth busiest stop. We were among the first transit agencies in America to act in the face of this pandemic. In mid-March, BART enacted a hiring freeze and implemented service cuts. We work with our unions, standing shoulder to shoulder on our response efforts to identify cost savings that have so far helped us to avoid layoffs. Our latest initiative is offering voluntary retirement incentives to 40% of our workforce. Perhaps most importantly, BART recently agreed to new labor contracts with our three largest unions to bolster our financial stability and predictability. We used CARES Act funding to save our operating budget and to keep the trains running, and we cannot thank Congress enough for the money. BART is now facing a $210 million budget deficit in the current fiscal year and next. I want to make this clear. As we ask for emergency aid from the federal government, we are committed to doing our part to be fiscally responsible. Service level planning for next year is well underway. At BART, we are proud to continue to offer service seven days a week, although our trains are less frequent than before the pandemic. We have also been forced to close the system earlier at night. We cannot continue at our current pace without help. The prospect of deeper cuts and gutting service is unconscionable. We cannot turn our backs on essential workers. Scaled down transit does not build resilient cities and will not help with economic recovery. Five years from now, when we look back at this time, will it be the moment we widened the mobility divide or will it be the moment we thrived in the face of challenges? The federal government needs to answer the call. Thank you.